Netcasts you love from people you trust. This is Twit. So let's talk about Fraps. I have a love-hate relationship with this program. Fraps is the standard when talking about recording programs. It's made by Beepa and costs around thirty-seven dollars. The name stands for frames per second. On top of allowing you to record your gameplay, it will also allow you to benchmark your game and see your frames per second up in the top corner. This will allow you to record any DirectX or OpenGL source. So when you start up Fraps, you get a few options. This is the general tab, which will allow you to start Fraps minimize, start it when Windows starts, and that sort of stuff. Next is the frames per second tab. This is your benchmarking tab. Uh, it will allow you to export your benchmarks to a certain folder, uh, have a benchmark uh, key to start your benchmarks, and then what you are actually going to be benchmarking: your frames per second, your frame times, or the minimum and max average. And then you can also have it stop doing that after a certain set time. Over on the other side, you have your hot corner overlay. So let's say that you really want the yellow numbers to display in a different corner. You can choose that, or you can decide to hide the overlay entirely, which is what I do because I don't really need to know my frames per second all the freaking time. Next tab is the movies tab. This is how you will be recording your gameplay. You get to choose what destination the movies get saved to, the hotkey that will start and stop your recording, and then your frames per second, which you will be recording at. I tend to record at the uh, computer native uh, 2997, and your full size or half size. You can also decide if you want to split your recordings into four gigabyte chunks if you're, say, working with an older file system. You can also decide to record Windows 7 sound or record an external input. Now, I cannot figure out for the life of me how to change which microphone Fraps randomly decides to choose. So uh, for some reason, if it's not choosing the right one, I would suggest going down into your system uh, recording devices, change it to your correct one, and hope that Fraps also updates. If not, when you're recording, there's no way to tell what audio source Fraps is using. You can also hide your cursor, uh, lock your frame rate, or force lossless RGB captures, which can be a little bit CPU intensive. And then finally, you have a screenshots option. So if you hit a hotkey, it will grab a screenshot of your game. Now, one thing to note about Fraps is that the file sizes that it creates are huge. Average while I'm recording the game is about a gig a minute. So if I record an hour of gameplay, that's easily 60 to maybe even 100 gigabytes of data. Fraps also has a few problems. First, there's no way to choose your audio device, just like I said earlier. And the only way that it indicates that it's recording is a little icon in your system tray, which of course you can't see if you are in full screen mode. Also, Fraps will not record separate audio from your game, in-game audio, or the, your computer audio, and your mic. It mixes it all down to one single recording. So if for some reason your game was really loud, it's going to stay that way because there's really no way to break those two levels apart from each other. I've had huge issues uh, before with Fraps. It used to be the absolute go-to program that I would use all the time, and I still actually really love it. It's simple and it's easy to use. So if you don't want to dig into settings, I truly suggest Fraps. But there are a few downsides. There's another program that has a lot more settings, but is a lot more complicated. That's in the next video about DX3.